Larry Chen. I've been shooting car culture all over the world for the past 18 years. From the best builds to the fastest races, I've seen it all. In this series, I'm highlighting the gearheads that inspire me in our generation. Ready to rock, a simple phrase stemming from music that most people throw into various conversations on occasion. For Von Gittin Jr. though, it's a way of life. As arguably the most recognized American in professional drifting, Vaughn has turned that simple phrase into his entire life, mainly in the form of his factory-backed motorsports team, RTR. Vaughn and RTR's multiple championships in various motorsport disciplines speak for themselves. I'd say we're seeing a modern-day Ganassi, Andretti, or Shelby in the making. In this episode, I'm on set with Vaughn, shooting a Halloween video he and his RTR drivers are starring in. We are shooting at the Drift Mansion, which is an Airbnb that comes with a drift track and much, much more. While on a rest day during the shoot, I caught up with the head scientist at the RTR lab to talk about his life and career. Sure, I also want to say while we're here, this is not my house. We're on set for a shoot right now. <laughs> <laughs> Although I wouldn't put it past you if this was your house. This place, it's called Little Talladega and it's also called Drift Mansion. The Drift Mansion, yeah. Right? Drifting is like, you have to be vetted, but like for general people to come here, they got go-karts, crazy carts, four-wheelers, UTVs, 60 acres of trails, like four miles. It's, it's a very amazing, like pure fun having every moment here. We have such a long history. Very I long mean, history. I, I've been shooting you even before I was uh, a credentialed photographer. Yeah. You know, the first time I ever watched you drive was at California Speedway 2004 at D1 yeah. versus USA. Since then, for whatever reason, we've always been shooting together and then we ended up in different countries together. But I guess I kind of wanted to get like a Von Gittin Jr. life update. Like this is a good sure. place to kind of maybe look back and then look forward a little bit, you know? Recently, we were at the Faroe Islands. I would say 90, 95% of the night shoots that I do, where I have to stay up all night, are with you. My fault. Sorry to your body, Larry. Yeah, yeah, so like, <laughs> for example, this shoot, we stayed up pretty much all night for multiple nights in a row. The Faroe Island shoot. And that was crazy, because we cra I crashed the car, and that, oh my gosh, what a shoot that was. Oh. That's not good. <laughs> it's just so much to go wrong, but at the end, the, the finished product was absolutely amazing. The still photos that I got, honestly, were probably some of the best of the year. Incredible. I think the first ever shoot that I had to stay up all night was Fire Drift. That was kind of a groundbreaking moment for me in that everything I learned up to that point about capturing racing and action was put to the test. That shoot was really big for me because the Canon professional camera at that time just came out. And then now all these years later, like for example, the Faroe Island shoot, I had a prototype Canon R3 camera. Every time it seems like I'm able to shoot with you, it's like I'm just trying to push the technology for image capturing. I've had a chance to shoot you when you won your championship in 2010, all the way up until... My second championship, 2020, you yeah. obviously yeah. shot that. I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> King of the Hammers. Yeah, so off-road racing, King of the Hammers, that's such a big part of what you do now. Like, it's funny to me that a lot of people know you as an off-road guy, and they may not even know you as the drift guy now because of what you've done in the off-road world. Winning a championship last year with uh, Ultra 4. In fact, you're still doing that, and you're not doing formal drift. For me, it all really kind of steps back to family life right now. You know, we had Gunner, he's three and a half years old. We have Grayson, who's now six months. This has all kind of been part of a plan that I put in about three years ago, where I said, hey, you know, at this certain time, I'm only gonna do 15 to 20 events max a year. You know, I've been doing 30, 40 for, I can't even tell you how long. 2020 and 2021 were really tough with Gunner. And like, you know, when you know having a kid, it just like changes a lot of perspective. And what I do is my passion and my life, and I love it. And I would literally work 24 hours a day if I didn't have some sanity and like some morals of like, hey, I need to be a good father. I need to be a good husband. 
And so I made the tough decision in 2021 that I was going to step back from Formula Drift. And it was really just a time thing. And I was like, okay, what's the thing that can give right now for me to obtain the work-life balance that I want and obtain the business life balance that I need to be successful in the other things that I have going on while also enjoying my passion and continuing to do the things I've been doing. So bringing Chelsea on was a part of that plan. Bringing Adam on was a part of that plan. And I felt like, you know, it was the perfect time for me. You know, I won the championship in 2020. I didn't need to continue chasing Formula Drift championships. There was really nothing, I don't wanna say nothing to prove there, but like I enjoy the battles and, and enjoy FD, but like I didn't feel like I need to chase championship anymore. So, you know, I decided to take a break from that in 2021 and focus more on off-road and put my competitive energy and efforts towards off-road. I really enjoy it. It's like a very big reinvigoration of competitiveness for me. It's very new and like I really enjoy the drive time that I get. So that's where the decisions stem from. You know, we're a very big part of Bronco and that's obviously very important to Ford and also a lot of my other partners. So it just made sense. For our first episode, we featured Daigo Saito, right? Yeah. We went to Japan and checked out his collection and his insane compound. When I saw it, it was a self-made drift empire. And I look around and I'm like, is there anyone else in the world that has done this? Yes, Von Gittin Jr. You know, it didn't start out that way. Like you weren't just handed all this stuff. Oh my gosh, you know, no. So a lot of people think so, because back when we started, there wasn't the internet. There wasn't a way for us to show us on our backs, working on our cars in our garage. And uh, that's how I started. And I actually spent all my money and it wasn't until a few years in that I paid off my credit cards that I'd maxed out. Picture this, okay, Von Gittin Jr driving his competition car in an open trailer, open trailer. Go, go, going to the events yep. to try to compete like and also not in a ford not in a mustang yeah no i had s13 i yeah. still have it yeah sr20 very simple 2871 turbo 400 wheel maybe it didn't even have like a standalone it had a you know a flash on the factory ecu the first formula drift at road atlanta we're all still learning I, that was the first time i pulled a handbrake I was up at the top of the hill, rode away, and I'm like, well, clutch kick's not gonna work on this entry, you know? So I'm like, this thing working? Okay, I had a little, you know, drift knob on it. So I'm like, all right. Early days of drift, man, the Formula D, probably until 2007, 2008, like we were really just figuring it out. Cars weren't set up, you know, that's how Reese came out and just destroyed everyone because we're just guys off the street, you know, trying to figure things out, sliding around. And Reese was a pro driver and knew about setup and looked at what the cars are doing and made them, you know, grippy and just smoked everyone. And then it was like, okay, this is what we gotta do. All the things that you've been able to do, like we've been to China, a Russian village in Japan. We've done so many things and all of it really stems from the love for cars, love for drifting, the skill that you have as a drifter. Because as good as you are in marketing and business, if you were never really good at competing, then you wouldn't be where you are. For those of you guys who don't know, you were still doing IT stuff, and that was your uh, nine to five job. Yeah. And on the weekends, you would fly to compete in Formula Drift, and then you would do a red eye back to your IT job, fixing computers, fixing network servers, having flown all night just to get back to your yeah. job, regular job. Yeah, and uh, that's how I afforded to build my first car. That's how I afforded to do FD from really 2004. So everything up to 04, and then in 05, we debuted the Mustang, and I was still working a full-time job, but I was a fly-in driver starting in 05. And then 07, I quit my job. And the, it was scary because I was making great money. I was uh, 27 years old, big bonuses. You know, they had fired my boss a couple years ago, gave me his job. On paper, I was like totally underqualified to take it, but I was very resourceful uh, using the Google machine and fake it till I made it. And, um, and I just made the big decision to quit. You know, I realized that like, I kind of had one foot in my job, one foot in my passion. And I was like, worst case scenario, my passion doesn't work out and I go back to IT. I'm not gonna lose my brain. And if I do, I won't be here anyway. So that's what I did. And I just never, you know, never looked back. Wow!
you know, so with electrification, I know the technology and I know what's possible with it. And up until the Mach-E 1400, I don't think anyone had really shown it in a fun way. You know, I think Ford is owning the fun of electric, and I think we're gonna continue to see in the future the vehicles they come out with being a, a lot of fun. Should we try the Lightning first? Don't kill Chelsea. Oh my God. It's so fast. <laughs> this thing has pro power on board, so in the bed, you can literally power your house. A huge market for this truck is people that live off grid because they can literally go to work, yeah. charge their vehicle at work, come home, power their house, the entire house, because it has so much power. The other thing too that people don't realize about electric vehicles is the, the low center of gravity. Right. It just creates such a different driving experience than anything uh, that I've ever, uh, ever imagined. Like they handle, they're just glued to the road. It's like literally that battery and that low CG is just pulling the vehicle to the ground. Let me try one more launch. Yeah. Oh, there you go. See, oh, uphill, yeah, uphill. Yeah. It actually right. spins pretty good. A little burning. Too. Yeah. We're hot. Let's go, baby. We got her. Nice How to see business? you, my friend. What are we doing? We're, awesome. I'm, I'm testing out this thing. Dude. This is my first this. time driving oh, this. Are you getting their lightning on? Yeah. yeah. All right. It's really fast, but what I'm excited about is Vaughn's going to let me drive his demo car. Does it do burnouts? I don't care about the demo car. <laughs> you just care about that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we got to cut some chase. Yeah, oh, does have it do you burnout? seen this guy? He's been shredding. No, 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 no. Don't, don't put me up, man. 20 years of watching drift. No, no. And he finally gets behind the wheel and he's a legend. We're supposed to believe he hasn't been practicing for years. No, 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 come on. Larry Chen is in Vaughn's demo car right now, about to get it in. Uh, he did a couple laps already, get comfortable, but uh, I think he's got Cinder now, so. <laughs> yeah, this is so much fun. So what's the history behind this chassis? So this is Chelsea's old FD chassis. It's got a couple smushes, but for a demo car, the chassis is fine. What this car is, is basically FD chassis, really the unibody, and then the front end is different. This has the new fun haver steering kit on it. We're just about to launch that to public. We've got a couple out and guys testing and they love them. Really changes the dynamics of the Mustang, gives a ton of angle in the front end and the rear, is just a drive shaft shop nine inch conversion and it doesn't have like all our crazy arms. It's still factory spring on bucket, uh, RTR by BC coilovers on it. So it's really a toned down car. It's got a supercharged Coyote, Vortec blower, 750 horsepower at the wheels, T56 Magnum, and uh, it just rips. It's super reliable and we can beat the crap out of it. This is actually a six speed then? Yep. Okay. and. Uh because the gearing is different, that's why you're able to run third on here. Yeah, we could actually run fourth probably, but wow. third has a lot more response. Wow. So uh, I would suggest you play around in second for a little bit. It's car is yeah. super responsive. Uh, the one thing about this different than the car you're driving is you're not gonna be able to just toss it in and let go of the wheel. Yeah. If you're driving really aggressive, it does have a little bit more return, but just know that you're gonna have to, you know, turn the wheel a bit more than you do in uh, in your car or like an S13. Right, because all the seat time I've had is in my personal 350Z, which is, you know, stock power plant, 300 horsepower on a good day. This is way more than double. Let's see uh, how you doing with this one.
scripting cars now. It's the best thing ever. Oh my god, that makes me so excited. Dude, this is seriously the best. I'm sad I didn't get into it earlier, but I'm happy I'm getting into it now because I want to be able to do this, you know, show up anywhere and at least get to experience it. Let me, let me see these things. Put them back. <laughs> What's that? Where have you been hiding these bad boys, man? Where have you been hiding those things, huh? So much fun. This boy got hands. <laughs> yes. I always wear earplugs, you know, when I'm shooting. Very important thing. Very important. I want to be able to enjoy music. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I wore them sooner, but... So, dude, people don't wear earplugs and they will, they shoot top fuel. Like... That's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. Oh! So good. Good luck, have fun. You know, because I've been drifting, I can actually appreciate what you're doing so much more. Ah, uh, that makes sense. When I'm just watching you drive this course and you're making up the course as you go, you're making these micro adjustments. It's almost like you let the time happen. Everything is slowed down in my brain, right? Like you get, I don't see you get to a level, but it's just like everything is slower. So I immediately, when I get in the car, I get in the zone and time is slower than like right now when we're here. I don't know how to explain it. You know, a lot of people are just such fast hands and just Ugh! but like if you slow down and keep your breath like nice and consistent, you really do have all the time in the world. Yeah. You know, as long as you're thinking ahead and not being reactive. And I mean, I think that just is a result of 20 years of doing it, you know? It's just so natural. It's like what you're doing, it's like us doing normal things, like stopping at a stop sign, <laughs> parallel parking. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Have fun, y'all. Woo! Little Talladega as a facility really is a dreamland for any car nerd. The fact that you can walk out of the front door and jump into a drift car, do laps nonstop until you blow up your tires. It really is something out of Richie Rich or like that 90s movie, Blank Check. Thanks again to John David. This was actually his vision to build something for people like us to enjoy. The next day, he actually let me shred his personal 370Z, and it was just too much fun. The place has everything you would need for a bachelor party or a family reunion, or just a bunch of car nerds coming together to have fun. Hopefully the next time I come back, I'll bring my own drift car. That way I can actually tandem with John and the boys. But if you're interested in checking it out, they're actually a couple hours outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you guys for watching my new Haggerty show. I really wanted to feature automotive trendsetters in our generation. Without Pennzoil, this series wouldn't be possible. They are enthusiasts like us. They believe in car culture and they want to keep it alive. Pennzoil supports a lot of racing, drifting and hill climb and everything in between. They also support a lot of our friends. On top of that, we run Pennzoil in all of our project cars. I hope you like this content because we have a lot coming your way.